A few years ago, I reviewed the Cooler Master Masterbox NR200P case. It's mini ITX, looks very similar to this, and I liked it a lot. Cost just under £100 here in the UK, and it had a load of options you could put inside it. Horizontal graphics card, vertical graphics card, liquid cooler, air cooler. After that, James reviewed the NR200P Max, which was a bare bones that came with an SFX power supply and a liquid cooler pre-installed. That was more expensive, about £300. And now we have this, the NR200P V2, which looks exactly the same as the NR200P Max. And the reason is, it's the same case. What they've done is they've taken the case from the Max and they decided to sell it as a standalone product. But it's not really a V2, because this product would sit alongside the original NR200P. Doesn't that just sound complicated? The explanation is straightforward-ish. So the NR200P could house liquid cooler or air cooler, vertical GPU or horizontal GPU. This V2 can't do all of those things. Forget about an air cooler. It's not an option. You have to install a liquid cooler in the roof and you have to put your graphics card vertical. You can't put your graphics card horizontal. Look, I'll prove it. You see, it's a great product, as I will tell you at some length, but it's a stupid name. Let's take a look at what you get in the package before we pull the case apart. The user guide is on a double-sided piece of paper. Lots of information, but it's rather small. It's also multi-language. So you might find it easier to refer to the online PDF. We have the accessory pack, which is inside the case. I've obviously removed it from the case. PCI Express riser, color coordinated to the case, and you can see, very short, which is appropriate to this case. And a bag of fasteners and accessories. In this box, a tempered glass side panel. I'm in two minds about the inclusion of this glass panel. I like the mesh, I like airflow. My thinking is your graphics card is going to be standing vertically there. You want air to get to the graphics card. However, you might be using custom loop cooling. With your glass panel installed, you can now see your expensive hardware. But my inclination is to stick with an air-cooled graphics card and to stick with that mesh panel. And so we move on to the case itself, which pulls apart with ease. The top panel pops loose just like that. You will note we have a fan rack in the roof of the chassis with the original NR200P. You actually had to install the cooling in the top panel, which is awkward. This, as with the Max, much more straightforward. Also worth noting, the front I.O. has a USB Type-C. The original only had Type-A's. Off with that side panel off with that side panel, off with the front panel. One of the other changes from the original NR200 to the Max and to this is that we have extra airflow. The original case had two drive mounts. This just has the one there, or you can install a drive on the back of the power supply housing. So you're losing one SSD mount, but you're gaining an opening. You get a single fan in the floor of the case, but don't forget you'll have a liquid cooler going in the roof. That's gonna have two fans, so that'll handle the exhaust side of things. Here we have the housing for your SFX or SFX L power supply, two screws. Now that then gets slightly tangled up because on the bottom we have two Velcro straps, which are also used for cable management. So we release those and we can see the interior is almost entirely open. Four screws. Away with that bracket and four more screws. And away with that part of the frame. And with that second part of the frame removed, we now have loads of access to the interior. 
but there's more if you choose. You can remove the bottom panel and also if you note there are screws around the graphics card holder. Bit of a wiggle and away of the graphics card holder. As I mentioned in the intro, only vertical GPU mounting. You cannot rotate this, you can't install horizontally, but you can install this bracket on your graphics card and then install the assembly for maximum ease. And would you take a look at that? You'll note there are more screws. We can pull the case apart further, should we choose. The only fixed parts actually is the, let's call it the motherboard tray. It's really a motherboard bracket. As you can see, we have rivets here and here. Those points are fixed. Everything else held together with screws and taking it down to the absolute fundamentals couldn't be easier. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out Boolies.co.uk. The first chunk of hardware is installed. The motherboard assembly built around this Gigabyte B650i Aorus Ultra. The processor, AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. But what's this copper thing? It's this rather sporting accessory from Deepcool, which is a guard to stop thermal compound getting around the edges of your processor and making a nasty mess. Whether it makes any difference thermally, don't know but it looks nice. The memory is G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo, rated at 6,000 mega transfers. The main SSD is a Sabrent Rocket 4.0, which is under the heatsink. Around the front, I've installed a SATA SSD. Obviously there's no cables connected yet, but the point is the SSD does indeed fit in place very nicely. And we have the option of adding a second SATA SSD to the back of the power supply housing or if we prefer, a full size three and a half inch hard drive, just like that. It so happens the manual tells us there's another mount for a hard drive in the floor of the case, which considering the graphics card is gonna sit here and we have a fan in the floor and we have a dust filter. I think it's one of those, if you really want maximum storage, well, yes, you can add another drive. My view would be if you wanna add maximum storage, perhaps consider a different case. Next, we have the power supply and the name tells you pretty much everything you need to know. 1100, 1100 watts, SFX, SFX form factor, and platinum rated, absolutely top notch hardware. ATX3 and they call it PCI Express 5 compatible. That basically means we have a 12 volt high power cable with a nifty right angle connector at the business end. So let's just connect up the cables. It's a fully modular power supply, but you'll note the sockets stand proud of the main housing. Despite that, it's still incredibly small for a power supply with such a high rating. And we install the power supply in the housing. And then we wiggle some cables out of the way and install the housing. Having to take a certain amount of care there just in case I trapped any cables. And a bit of mess to sort out. That looks a bit less awful. And just to show you what it looks like with a full size hard drive installed. I'm not suggesting that I advocate this but it does go in place. And now I look more closely, I can see that this front cutout is gonna pass some cooling air to your hard drive. So the fact it's behind a graphics card isn't necessarily the end of the world. Next up, the CPU cooler. This is my first time working with a Cooler Master Atmos liquid cooler. And there are some neat touches. The manual is printed on the boxes. This is the accessory box. That's the Intel box, which I don't need. 
This is the AMD box. I've installed these two brackets. Basically you have to choose whether you're going Intel or AMD and then you proceed. However, the fans are installed with the cooler in the box. So this is essentially how it's supplied. There are other bits and pieces I probably don't need. That's a fan RGB controller. One curiosity is that you have to install thermal compound before you proceed. You will note I'm instructed to grease the cooler before I install it. So let's do that. Appropriate purple thermal compound and here we go And then we install the cooler because the fans are installed on the cooler in the box I'm going to try it facing this way so the cables can go straight out of the back of the case You will note I don't have the bracket installed on this corner of the case So I'm able to just offer up the cooler and screw it home on one side Gives me easy access With the pump block installed on the CPU, it becomes clear the radiator needs to be reversed so we can route the hoses correctly. To make life easier, we can remove the floor of the case, just a single screw and away it comes, and now we have loads of access. With the fans and the RGB connected, we can tidy up those cables, and then it's time to install the second radiator bracket. And now the PC is nearing completion. Our graphics card is this Gigabyte RTX 4080 Gaming OC. I've installed the detachable bracket, which is used to mount the graphics card. So what we have to do is to attach the power connector. Carefully arrange the hoses from the AIO cooler, which will go behind the graphics card. Push the nose of the graphics card through the new opening in the front of the case. Secure the bracket. Clip the PCI Express riser on the bottom of the graphics card, which is where having the bottom removed from the case really helps. Goodness me, that's all close for comfort. On with the bottom of the case, two more screws. And there we have an incredibly compact AMD RTX 4080 PC. With the PC running we can see the RGB inside the chassis and we snap on the top cover and then we install the front cover. When it comes to the main panel we first have a look at the glass panel and that looks pleasant enough. But we prefer airflow so it's time for some mesh and a gentle glow of RGB lighting. And we move on to thermal testing. We're running simultaneously Cinebench R23 and Speedway stress test. The system is drawing 490 watts at the wall socket. Most of that power is going to the graphics. With the fans set pretty much flat out, the AIO fans are running at 2300 RPM, the case fan at 900 RPM, and as you can see we have the mesh side panel in place, and the system sounded like this. In that configuration with an ambient of 21 degrees, the CPU is running at 81 degrees, the graphics card at 67 degrees. Replacing the mesh side panel with the glass side panel, the system sounded like this. And now the CPU temperature is 83 degrees and the graphics temperature goes up by 10 degrees to 77 degrees. Slowing the fans down to cut the noise levels, we're now running the AIO fans at 1300 RPM. The case fan is still at 900 RPM. With the mesh panel reinstalled, the system sounds like this. CPU temperature is now 86 degrees and the GPU temperature also increases slightly to 69 degrees. Replacing the mesh panel with a glass side panel with the fan still running low and slow, the system sounded like this. And now the CPU temperature is 88 degrees and the GPU temperature 79 degrees. And as we reach my conclusions about this Cooler Master NR200PV2, there's something you need to bear in mind, something fundamental. This case is the case out of the bare bones. 
the NR200P Max that James previously reviewed, and James loved the Cooler Master NR200P Max. I did. I love the NR200P Max. And there you have it. The great man has spoken. But this gives me a conundrum, because I don't quite understand why this NR200P V2 exists. You see, when you buy the Max bare bones, you get the case, the power supply and the cooler. It's an assembly. You put the motherboard in, along with a processor, memory and SSD and the graphics card, and you're done. In this instance, you have to pick a power supply and you have to pick a cooler and then you have to install those pieces of hardware and they can pretty much only go in one way. You're far better off having specific parts that fit precisely in this case where everything is rooted just so. As I say, I'm slightly confused by the existence of the V2, but if you've watched this review and you understand it, hooray, we can proceed to my pros and my cons. Pros, the good points. The NR200P V2 is simple to dismantle and gives you plenty of access once you're inside the case. Build quality is excellent and the price, just under £100, is very fair. Cons, the negative points. This is kind of all one point but I've broken it down. You're limited to an ITX motherboard and an SFX power supply. Installing the cooler on AMD as I did is slightly fiddly because you can't pick which position it goes in, you pretty much have to take what you get. And cable management is awkward. I could also say the graphics card has to go vertically, that reduces your options. Overall, I think this case is a worth buying. It's certainly interesting, and goodness gracious me, it's been a lot of work.